Before I roll this video, um, the last video didn't go down particularly well and clearly I did not provide enough context or explanation. My criticism of Damro T and the tea tour is by no means some sort of national insult or commentary on the kindness of Sri Lankan people. Far, far from it. It was more because I'd spoken to lots of people and seen a few videos of people that had a completely different experience. They got to see more of the tea factory. Um, it was more sort of intimate and that really the one thing that I wanted was to walk through the tea estate and also to taste lots of different teas, which um, they only served breakfast tea. So it wasn't to say that you shouldn't do a tea tour in Sri Lanka. I actually think you should. It's more to say perhaps there are better options both in Noir Elia and in Sri Lanka in general. So I hope that provides more context. I can see how I might have come across as overly negative. I try to show both sides of when I'm traveling. So I want to showcase things that I really enjoy. But on the other hand, I, I think it's dishonest if I try and sugarcoat everything and, and make it look amazing when perhaps it isn't. Because then people might go there when there might be better options. So I guess that's the thing. Do a tea tour find better options. I actually, um, a, a few people sent me a link of a tea tour, um, a video of a tea tour that looked really good. So I've left that in the description of the old video. I do need to provide some context about Adam's peak though, because I can um, see that being misconstrued. It's embarrassing for me. I decided to do Adam's peak at very late notice. So I did no research and all the people that I'd spoken to talked about the hike and the sunrise. So I was expecting, you know, through the woods, up a hill, um, along trails for a nice sunrise when actually it's, Adam's Peak is not about the sunrise. It's a really important religious location, both in Sri Lanka and for multiple religions. So the vast majority of the people there were doing it to go to the temple at the top to see the foot print of Buddha or for other religious reasons. And so actually at the top, I didn't go to the temple because there was hundreds of people queuing and I'm not actually religious. So it doesn't hold the same symbolism for me. And I didn't feel right taking up a spot or taking up time for people behind me that, you know, it's, it's of more importance to. So it was really, it was, it was a really interesting one. As you'll see from the video, I was quite surprised. It shows that, you know, if you do your research, things will make more sense, you'll be less confused, and you'll have um, different expectations. So yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a contrast, me being an idiot and only wanting a sunrise, and all of the locals not caring about the stupid stuff that I care about and going for a much more, um, I guess important or higher purpose. And that was shown by the fact that people were doing it who were quite old actually and, and very young kids and it must have taken them a really, really long time. I quite like the fact that I was that ignorant tourist that was expecting a hike through trees and on trails and that the sunrise wasn't as good as the one that I experienced in El Iraq because the vast majority of people there didn't care about the sunrise, or at least, or at least that's how I, I perceived it. In retrospect, it was quite humbling. It makes me look a bit silly, actually. So um, bear that in mind when you watch the video. I think if you want to do a hike and see a sunrise, El Rock is far more accessible, and Adams Peak is actually quite a long way out of the, you know, the normal route from Candy to Ella, because you have to take about a day and a half detour. There were a couple of things that I wanted to find context on, and I did try and ask um, a lot of the locals, but there was quite a significant language barrier. So if anybody can let me know, especially the string, the string, I'd like to know what the, the symbolism of that is and, and why people do it. And also the, the people that were chanting as they went up, I, I imagine that that was a, a religious pilgrimage. Um, but yeah, any, any further context would be really, really good. And the final thing was, um, it happens everywhere because there's people selling stuff outside the Vatican City. But it was really, um, 
I don't know whether it's because it, a lot of families do it that there were so many sort of teddy bears and and toys for sale in the town at the bottom of Adams Peak. It seemed a bit out of place um, for somewhere that's you know holds that religious importance, but I guess it happens everywhere that people are just trying to make a living. It, it took me by surprise, let's say, um, to see these these teddies, but. Obviously, people are buying them um, because otherwise they wouldn't be in business. So who am I to, to pass judgment on that? The next few videos, because this is delayed, through Candy and Sagiria, I had an incredible time. So these two days were a little bit strange um, for me, but uh, it's more positive moving forward. Okay, let's, let's see how this one goes down. Some of these buses had the neon lights on earlier. They look crazy, it's like, like a transformer. London would be a happier place if... if all the, bus, all the London buses were like that. That's not even the craziest one. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. There's ones that put that to shame as well. Did you ask for them? <laughs> <laughs> they look exactly the same. Yes. No, 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 it's, it's uh, large. Not bigger. It's, um, Good size. What is the price? Yeah. This hat. I'll see it. 100. What do you think about 200? Yeah, boy. Yeah, you. 200, no bad luck. Marlon got one as well. Yeah, of course. Team hats. I feel like a Mongolian warlord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm amazed at the amount of, uh, let's face it, tat that's uh, in these shops. There's like toy helicopters and radio controlled cars. I thought it would just be a small town that you start a hike from, but then you've just got all of this. It's like something out of a nightmare. What? Seems a little out of place. Don't know. Must be in business. People are buying teddies. <laughs> Exhibit B. We've got to get up at 2 a.m. So Simon needs to sleep. See you in a few hours. White Hat Crew, 2 a.m. I'm ready to start. Look at these keen beans. Good luck, sir. Where's your hat? Should I wear it now? She's too cool for school. Uh, ready. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's get walking. Three and a half hours of sunrise, so we've got plenty of time. And we'll just get going. There's a mix of sort of religious temples and just loads and loads of shops. <laughs> I thought the lights that you can see going all the way up Adam's Peak were people with torches, but no, it's just lit stairs the whole way. I say the whole way, I'm not even halfway up yet, so that opinion might change, but but that, apparently that's the case. Steps are getting a little bit steeper now. Don't know how interesting the route up will be. But 
It's just a steady stream of people going both ways. My ability to sweat is now being shown. Steeper stairs pretty much the whole way now, I think. I guess I'll show you the route on the way down when the sun's up. It's probably easier. Uh, uh. Incense. Ah, oh, this is the string. Ah, yes. So you can buy a string at the bottom. And then you attach it here and take it all the way up, I guess. I wonder what that's for. I think we're pretty close to the top now. An hour of just traffic jams like this, the whole way. Pretty much at the top now. And there's it. A lot of people. A lot of queues. <laughs> I can't tell if there's a viewpoint at the top where you watch the sunset or you watch it down there because there's a temple of sorts at the top. I have to figure that one out. No. Loads of people for the temple at the top. I guess they're all waiting for sunrise, I don't know. It's more a religious spot. Now we've got to figure out where we need to sit for sunrise. I think that it might be because it's a national holiday weekend, or a long weekend, but this is ridiculous, you just can't move. We seem to have cleared the crowds now, but for the time being, and the sun's coming out. Mm. Made it to the better viewpoint, which is a bit further down, just in time. It's happening! She said uh, that the sorry. red color, red color is missing. Yeah. The grass is under there's right. there's no red at all. Yeah. Oh no. It's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah. But for the chaos up there, oh, yeah. just stay in Ella. Watch it from Ella Rock. It's way better. And now we have to walk back down and my old man knees are going to turn to dust. I might not have any knees by the time we get down. Guess I'll put the drone up. Um, be warned, drone footage makes things look about a million times better than they are. So, take that for what it is.
Photos, photos. It's also nice. It's nice as the sun's coming up, though. Yeah. Get some colour. Yeah, that's a nice shot. On a mission. Don't know exactly what that was, but felt like more of a pilgrimage. Um, hopefully if somebody can tell me what that is, I'd be very grateful. Also these strings that people were putting up, sort of halfway up. If anybody can give me a bit more detail, again, would be greatly appreciated. I feel a bit naive. Um, the cool thing is, is that one, like over 95% of the people here are locals, which is awesome. You don't see many tourists. I'm sure there are lots of tourists, I mean, I'm here. And also, most people seem to be going up to the temple for religious reasons rather than just going up to watch the sunrise, which is also very cool, whether you're religious or not. I think it's um, virtuous, I guess. Is that the right word? I don't know. Getting towards the end now. It's been about a six hour round trip, including the one and a half hours of mayhem at the top. I would say s stop at the better viewing point, unless you want to go and see the footprint of Buddha and go to the top, then if you're just there for the sunrise and the climb, don't bother going to the, to the craziness at the top. <laughs> One thing to note, it's a little bit embarrassing that you know you have the Western tourists that have their fancy trainers and anoraks and bags for this climb and the majority of the locals and there are thousands of them are wearing flip-flops. There are people that are barefoot, you've got really young kids and really old people with walking sticks just getting on with it, barefoot or in flip-flops. So I think the tourists should probably look at that, stop worrying so much about you know, am I going to get cold? Do I have the right equipment? I think there's more than enough cases of people here that um, just make do. What's the verdict? Would you recommend it? Not really, just stop at the middle of the... Yeah. But would, would you recommend doing Adam's Peak? Adam's Peak, not, not really, no. No, <laughs> little Adam's Peak, To be yes. honest. <laughs> yeah. So that's my my verdict as well. Yeah. I thought it was you could do it from Ella, um, but even from uh, Noir Elia, yeah, it's a three-hour drive. Yeah. So it's it's a big detour, and I'm sure the sunrise when it's got colour is good, but just do Ella Rock or uh, Little Adam's Peak. Mm. If you want to go up and see the footprint of Buddha, then fair enough. But it's it's a what a day and a half out of the way yeah. to uh, just hike up a load of steps. Just my opinion. <laughs> right, candy next. Yeah, candy next. Bye bye. <laughs>